Aditya L1, all about ISRO's solar mission. We're going to explain it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're about to embark on an exploration into the fascinating realm of space with an eye on the upcoming Aditya L1 mission. Now, the mission is set to launch on the 2nd of September 2023 at about 11.10 a.m. The Aditya L1 mission, it represents a significant leap for the Indian Space Research Organization, marking its first ever solar-focused initiative. Now, this pioneering endeavor aims to unlock the mysteries of the space weather phenomena and solar gases as we position the spacecraft within the Sun-Earth system's Lagrangian Point 1, or L1, which is why the mission is called Aditya L1. Now, intriguingly, this mission follows hot on the heels of Chandrayaan 3's triumph touchdown on the moon's southern pole. Already, we've learned about the variation in temperature on the lunar surface and, of course, also about uh, sulfur being detected by the Pragyan rover, which is an achievement that gathered global acclaim. But today, our focus turns to Aditya L1, which is not just a mission, but a quest, rather. A quest to understand the intricate dance of energy and particles between the sun and our planet. It's the sun, let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that keeps the entire solar system on its track. Now, with a budget of rupees 400 crore, which is lesser than that of Chandrayaan 3, and dedicated to this remarkable endeavor, the Aditya L1 mission is set to ride the wings of the PSLV XL rocket, which is also ISRO's workhorse, carrying it into the sun's orbit. And as it settles into the halo orbit around this L1 point, the lag range point 1, about 1.5 million or 15 lakh kilometers away from the Earth, we gain an unprecedented vantage point. Well, why? Because this is a continuous view of the sun, free from eclipses or occultations, and offers us real-time insights into the solar activities that shape our universe. And that's not all. Tune in right till the end, because today we have an exclusive treat in store for you. A conversation with a distinguished Aditya L1 scientist from the Indian Space Research Organization. Let me quickly introduce uh, our guests with us on the panel. Devdutt Mishra, former senior scientist of the Indian Space Research Organization, and of course, group captain, uh, uh, retired VN Jha, senior scientist uh, uh, and a joint director for the DRDO. Uh, group captain Jha, very warm welcome to you. Always a pleasure to be speaking to you. Group captain, some fresh pictures that have now come across from the ISRO's, uh, you know, official handle. The PSLV XL rocket, uh, you know, it has been sta stationed at the, uh, you know, uh, Satish Dhawan uh, Space Center. And uh, the excitement around Aditya L1, that's also now growing, right? I mean, the hangover of Chandrayaan 3 is not even over. And people are already, you know, intrigued and are wondering, are excited about Aditya L1. How close will we get to the sun? And all those questions about what is lag range point one, what does Aditya 1 entail, what kind of payloads are on Aditya L1. And uh, with the both of you gentlemen with us on the broadcast, we had a, uh, you know, little brief discussion. But today we're trying to expand on what uh, this particular mission is going to offer. Right at the outset, fresh pictures have come in, Group Captain Jha. Your initial thoughts about this uh, particular mission, the scientific objectives it's going to carry out, and now this entire journey, the four-month-long trajectory towards this lag range point one, uh, that has been, you know, the detailed description and the bifurcation has come out. There's a launch on the on the second of September. Then there's the initial orbit. You've got the elliptical orbit. You exit from Earth's gravitational sphere, and then there's this cruise phase, which seems like has been drawn by some second-year-old, uh, you know, uh, second grader, uh, you know, a sketchbook. Uh, there are weird, you know, uh, uh, um, trajectory. There is a weird trajectory on it, and then finally the halo orbit. Over to you. Your first, uh, you know, opinion, viewpoint, let's get the ball rolling. Aditya L1, certainly, uh, you know, exciting times for India's space research. Group Captain, it seems like you'll have to unmute yourself, sir. Thank you very much, Kabir. And thanks to News9 for taking up the cause of science. You have been spending so much time, you know, for the cause of uh, uh, informing, uh, informing the, the entire audience, the Indians, about the various aspects of uh, moon, sun, and the, the, the trajectories, various trajectories that we have been talking of, various hmm. satellites that we have been talking of. Thanks a lot for that. Coming back to Aditya 1. Yes, the elixir of moon, Chandrayaan 3, was not yet uh, over hmm. the effects of it. And the another elixir of uh, Aditya is on. Good show. This is how it should be there. 
the temperament of science, the scientific temper should always continue and this should make the people to think about that what all are there in the cosmos to know about and what all, what all are there for the benefit of the mankind for in the entire cosmos. Well, coming back to the Adit One mission, it has been a long drawn, uh, you know, uh, uh, mission. It has, the ISRO has been working on it for uh, many years now. And uh, not that we don't know much about the sun, not that uh, Adit is going to tell us uh, uh, entirely new chapter about the sun. No, many such missions have taken uh, place in the past by, you know, mostly by NASA and some even by the ESA, uh, European Space Agencies and the others. Hmm. So information have been coming uh, on, on the matters of uh, matters related to sun. Uh, very, uh, you know, from very uh, beginning of the seventh, uh, uh, seventh, seventh centuries, I mean, seventeenth uh, 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 century that we can talk of. So, knowledge is there. Our own, uh, some of the very old literature are also telling us something about the sun. Hmm. But I'll just try to explain what our audience should know about it. The Earth is ready to send Aditya mission. And, right. you know, between Earth and the Sun, uh, the distance is almost about 150 million kilometers, about 15 crore uh, uh, kilometer. Hmm. And in that 15 crore kilometer, that is the average because uh, uh, Earth is rotating at slight bit of elliptical. There is a eccentricity there. So that is the average uh, distance between the Sun and the Earth. All right. Now... We know that sun has got tremendous amount of uh, gravity. And in that uh, turn, in that gravity, gravitational turn, Earth it has itself about, uh, uh, you know, some gravity. And to be precise, in case if we want to, uh, you know, make a comparison, uh, gravity of sun is about 28 times more than Earth. And these two, influence each other. There is a gravitational attraction. That is how hmm. Earth hmm. is making the chakra right. uh, or around the sun. However, in between the two, there is some point where the gravitational wave of sun and the gravitational wave of Earth, they come close to each other and they cancel each other. That is the point about 15 lakh hmm. kilometers hmm. away from the surface of the Earth, where this Lagrange, uh, Lagrange point is there, L1 is there. L1 is towards the sun, L2 is on the back of the sun, on the dark areas uh, behind the earth. And uh, uh, there are another uh, three points that we will talk some sometime later. But hmm, from hmm, the sun, hmm. uh, if this is the sun, it has got tremendous gravity and uh, at 120 degree uh, three axis, you know, 12 into three is 36. So 120 into 3 is 360 degree around the sun. Now at each of those 120 degree, uh, there is a point, uh, Lagrange point, uh, where the gravitational uh, forces, they come to somewhere on the neutrality. There's a small area in between, uh, you know, about uh, a few hundreds of the kilometers within which influence of either the sun or the earth. Okay, okay. So is almost zero. It is almost zero, and anything which is placed in that area right. will remain in that area for very long time. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the trajectory of Aditya L1. You can take a look at what, where Earth essentially is. This small little ball that you see over here, this is Earth. 15 lakh kilometers towards point L1. Take a look at uh, point L1 as well. Now, right at the top. Even as you know, we come out of our orbit, we then make it more elliptical, we raise the orbit, we then leave the Earth's orbit and go into this cruise phase. Now, uh, Group Captain Jha, what I'm trying to understand is, is this cruise phase, in the, after this cruise phase, the halo orbit insertion in L1 at lag range point L1, there's this, there's this weird U-turn, um, you know, a drift uh, sort of, uh, you know, an action which Aditya L1 will undertake. How will this happen? Why do we need to go all the way there and then come back here? Why not enter the halo, uh, you know, easily right where it can finally? Uh, what's the 
reason behind this particular U-turn over here. Because a lot of people up in the newsroom are already making jokes um, about how, uh, you know, this looks like a racing track uh, more than, uh, you know, uh, an orbit's entry into the uh, Lagrange uh, halo orbit. Uh, would you like to throw some light on that, sir? Try to. Uh, see, uh, you recollect uh, Chandrayaan 2 or Chandrayaan 3 parts. Hmm. What did happen after Chandrayaan was launched from the sur uh, surface? It had gone around in the orbit and made an elect elliptical orbit. You know, initially it was parked in 160, 170 into about 36,500 uh, odd kilometers of the elliptical orbit. Then it continued there for some time. And every time that it made a sling pass of the mm. Earth, the, the gravity's pull, there was augmentation of uh, velocity to some extent. But then there had been a lot of ORMs, that is the orbit raising maneuver. Chandrayaan could be reached with the orbit uh, uh, raising maneuver because the uh, you know, moon is just about 3.84 uh, lakh uh, kilometer or so. And the, the, the orbit can be raised up safely up to about 4.5 lakh. Uh, from there, the Chandrayaan or small payload can come back to the, can re-enter the Earth's orbit from that apogee. Hmm, hmm. But Agarin's point is that 15 lakh kilometer. And uh, small objects uh, like, you know, payload for Aditya or Chandrayaan or something, this cannot be sent onto an orbit, apogee of which should culminate with the Lagrange point. That is uh, uh, almost next to the, uh, uh, in the thought process right now. So what it does is it makes few slingshots. And finally, after the last slingshot, which will be again something like uh, 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 Chandrayaan 2, uh, about 4 lakh uh, plus odd kilometer of the apogee, thereafter, when it makes the trajectory towards the Lagrange point, I wonder if, in case you, if you had a 3D to show even this particular thing, you would have seen that the trajectory goes towards that. And when you are heading towards the Lagrange point, you know it's a, it's a not a small space somewhere where you have to go directly and get inserted. That is, uh, it is not there. It's a it's a uh, space where in the two gravitational waves of Earth and of Sun are cancelling each other. So so it's not that you enter through and through something like this. You have to enter into it. You have to enter into it and come mm. towards mm. A, mm. a space directly in uh, the line with the sun. Your your aim is to continue looking at sun uh, without a blink or 24 into 7 for any activity to take place on the solar uh, surface or solar core or magnetosphere of uh, anything and then grab those moments so you can't blink so your aim our aim aditya's aim is to go and be placed into that lagrange l1 point all right where from the the, the sensors will be mm. looking onto the sun 24 mm. 7 mm. although it is not static there will be a small orbit into which uh, this will be uh, moving around it is not static and then even the complications are being made because this Lagrange point, it is not purely, uh, you know, static, uh, gravitational, gravity-less environment. Uh, you imagine mm. of mm. a huge, uh, uh, you know, lake. In that lake, it may seem to be absolutely quiet, like, you know, the cosmos. And you throw a stone, you make something. Even the further point, far away, will make certain waves. So what happens in this Lagrange point is any mass of gravity passing in around that may be, uh, you know, one of our planet or, you know, some sort of gravitational uh, in equilibrium taking place somewhere else in Milky Way. Right, that right. Travels and that makes the, uh, that small L1 point also slightly vulnerable to the in in equilibrium that may happen so, so basically basically if 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 we come out of this halo orbit uh, uh, you know it's going to be difficult for uh, the craft to again enter the right kind of orbit trajectory right no it can be maneuvered it can be maneuvered then okay. it can it has to be maneuvered because you know maneuvering spacecraft at 15 lakh kilometer right. from earth Hmm. Uh, looking at its response, you know, so many, uh, uh, so much of time is spent onto that 
uh, wave to be sent, I mean, the, the, the input from received from the uh, uh, spacecraft and then giving the command. It becomes very difficult. It is not automated like what Chandrayaan had made that, you know, landing, uh, a soft landing of that. So it is not like that. So mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit of difficult, but then it is possible once you enter that lagging point, as uh, uh, our co-panelist mentioned, that it will remain there for five to ten years or even longer it can run there till the time you want it to leave that place. See, uh, there is an international understanding that you cannot clog those L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. L3, of course, nothing has gone in law. But even that L1, earlier some of the spacecraft have gone there and after it has lived its productive life, that means the uh, the, the period when it was doing the experimentation, right. when it was made to enter a, a, a halo uh, orbit, uh, we, which we call it a graveyard orbit, into which it exits that L1 and comes somewhere else. It, it is thrown out somewhere else okay. so that it doesn't okay. harm any other uh, uh, missions 